how to use the Pinterest Ads Manager. It's Michelle Held from Pintalk.net, and I'm gonna show you how to use the Pinterest Ads Manager. It's a very basic overview, and I'll show you a little bit about the different types of campaigns, uh, audiences, and how to set up a basic pin from the beginning. Follow me on my website, Pintalk.net, for Pinterest tips, tricks, and tutorials. If you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, please, at least like the video below. You can ask questions, leave a comment, I get to them all. And you can follow me on Twitter, of course, on Pinterest, and I'm on Instagram and Snapchat now under my other website, Matroni.com. So how do you set up your first Pinterest ad campaign and how do you use that ads manager? I'm gonna switch over to a screen share of the desktop view of Pinterest. We know that a lot of users uh, use Pinterest on mobile devices. Actually, it's the majority, but it's a lot easier. And the only way to show you the Pinterest ads manager is from my laptop. So I'll switch over to a screen share and you can see what the components are. And of course, this is assuming you already have a Pinterest account. And if you haven't switched to a Pinterest business account, which is totally free, you're gonna to have to do that to run the ads manager. How to use the Pinterest ads manager. Hey Pinners, Michelle Held from Pintalk.net. Today I'm talking about how to use the Pinterest Ads Manager. It's a brief overview of what to set up if you're looking to promote a pin or use the Promoted Pins platform, which is Pinterest's version of paid advertisements. Follow me online on my website, Pintalk.net, for Pinterest tips, tricks, tutorials, and of course, Pinterest for business. You can also follow my Pinterest account at Pintalk and I tweet all of my latest videos and blog posts. If you like this video, please hit the like button below and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. And you can always leave a comment about any questions you have or videos that you would like to see or blog posts that you want to see. So an overview of the Pinterest Ads Manager. First, you have to be a Pinterest for Business account. It's a free conversion. I wrote a blog post on how to convert to a Pinterest or business account. It's just a matter of adding in a little bit more information and then verifying your website. And you can see in my profile, my website is listed right there and then you could click over to it. So it's an added benefit if you are a business owner and then it also opens up some stats. You can see Pinterest analytics. And that is also covered in another video, but I can always add more. And of course, it gives you the option to use promoted pins, the Pinterest ad platform. So once you have verified your account, you can click on ads. And this will give you an overview of what to do in your campaigns. You have three types of campaigns available. You see if I hover back over the ads, I have awareness, engagement, and traffic, and in the overview of the ad platform. So I'm not running any ads right now, so we have zeros across the board. You have awareness campaigns, engagement campaigns, and traffic campaigns. Awareness is to build brand awareness like it says. You're looking for more impressions rather than a traffic campaign, which is clicks to your website. So you're going to show, they just operate a little bit differently. Engagement campaign is to get more comments and hearts or likes on your Pinterest pin. Usually a brand or business that is looking to actually build their Pinterest audience. So you want to build up your following and in the future maybe not put so much money toward the pay campaign. You just want to build up your organic audience. You would probably run an engagement or an awareness campaign as opposed to looking for straight clicks and conversions. You're going to drive traffic to your website. Uh, my other site, metrony.com, we talk about the ROI or return on investment on social media. So if you're dealing with your CEO who wants to see the straight numbers, they're going to want a traffic campaign, right? They're going to know, is this really worth it? And they want proof really fast and it's direct. Uh, if you're looking, social media managers are looking for engagement and awareness. So they probably want to work on building their following. So it depends on your goals. So First thing is converting to a business account. You also want to choose your type of campaign. And another thing you need to set up is conversion tracking. So I have my old tag set up because I was one of the first approved for a promoted pins campaign. I converted to a business account right away when it became available. 
and so I still have the old tags here and what it was similar to the way Facebook used to do it is used to add one tag per event so I would have a tag for you signed up for my newsletter, a tag for you visit the home page, a different tag for you visited my uh, blog post or the search page. Now I can just have one tag and I just added it before I started this video because I'm not, I'm not running any ads. I run them for other people but I, I don't run them for myself. So I can add one tag and then just change one line and it customize it per whatever the custom event is. So I could use the same Pinterest tra tracking tag across the whole site but it's more useful and you get more granular data if you add one or two more lines into the JavaScript tag that you get uh, and then you can tell exactly what the user did. It's very important to target shopper and tennis. So if you want to use pin, promoted pins or any social media advertising effectively and the lowest cost option, you want to target the user's intentions you know, and not spend money on people who are not truly interested or who are not going to buy your product. So your shopping intention is um, a good indicator that the buyer is serious. So if they come to your website and then drill down a couple categories, maybe actually add something to the shopping cart but don't pay, that person is a likely buyer. So it usually pays off to target them within one to three days and say, you know, did you forget something? You still have something in your shopping cart. Maybe offer them a 10% discount if they're going to complete the transaction. So targeting shopper, shopper's intention is great. Other targeting options available are uh, you can have audiences. So if I want to create an audience, I click on that from my ads tab and then click on create audience. I can see my options. Visitors who went to your site. So if we choose that, we're going to use our tracking and I'm going to target you based on the actions that you took on my website. Whether you, if you clicked away really fast, probably not, but if you click through a few pages, then you're a good target. Uh, I can also upload a list of customers and these are my existing customers. So I'm not a spammer. They don't, they, uh, because they are my legitimate customers, they signed up for my email list and I can target them with an ad. Say they uh, bought my book and I write a new book then I could send them an advertisement gently uh, via Pinterest and say, hey, I have a new book out and would you, know, would you want to buy it? And that's done with a promoted pin. We just did a video on that, what promoted pins look like on the website. Uh, an engagement audience as somebody who engaged with your pin, meaning they made a comment, they saved it to their board, or they, they hearted it or liked it. And this is a new targeting option for Pinterest promoted pins because the engagement, the saving of a board is, is tied to likelihood to buy and be brand loyal. And then act alike audience. This used to be called look alike on Facebook ads. It's still called a look alike audience. And what it is, is if you have a customer list and you upload that, Pinterest can survey its own user base and find you uh, a certain percentage or a certain number of Pinterest users who are similar in demographics to your current email list. And this is all done anonymously. The advertiser doesn't get that list. They simply get access to advertise to those Pinterest users, but they don't have the individual user data anyway to protect everyone's privacy. And those are the types of audiences and targeting that you can create via a Pinterest ad campaign. I also, if I go to actually create uh, create a, an ad, say I pick one of these, so I create campaign, and then it's going to ask me my targeting again, so I'm going to pick traffic, and we'll call it uh, sample, All right, I was already in here, I always think of the same names, daily budget, we'll, set, we'll pick lifetime because I'm goofing off, I don't have payment information in here either, so it will never work, let's pick $10. And today's the 20th, we'll have it end in two days. And it, so you have to choose a pin. So whatever pin you're going to use for your traffic campaign or your promoted pin campaign rather, uh, you already have to have it uploaded before you start this process. And then you're going to pick a pin. So these are things that I've pinned in the past few days. I, I wouldn't want to choose someone else's content and put money behind it, right? I, I want to promote my own stuff. So uh, this is from my other blog, Matroni, you know, how to turn an Instagram post into an ad. And this is one I just wrote for Pin Talk about how to stop Pinterest from posting Twitter tweets, which is a mistake I make all the time. Once in a while I mean it, but sometimes I'll 
have all this exercise stuff posted in my Twitter account that I did not intend to. So I saw this as a question and I said, yeah, I get it. So I'm going to pick my Matroni post and I can choose that and then I choose my audience. Remember these targeting audience, uh, choices we had before? So I name the pin, I pick the URL and that's already in there because it was saved with the original pin. And then I can also choose interest, right? I can pick people who are interested in animals. I can drop that down if I want to be more specific. Otherwise it chooses all animals. I can add that and then keywords as well. Uh, so I could pick Instagram. Instagram captions, just Instagram in general. And then allows me to add these. So it would be my keyword. Locations, I recommend picking all US locations. A large number of Pinterest users are outside the US. <clears throat> if you can only sell or ship in the US, of course, you want to narrow that down. Languages, um, devices, you know, a lot of Pinterest users, majority of Pinterest users are in mobile. Or you may want to choose gender, male, female. I have found that with locations that can be a little bit difficult because a lot of people don't specify that in their Pinterest profile. But uh, probably as an advertiser, you want to stick to the people who are actually saying they're in the U.S. And then your maximum cost per click, so CPC cost per click. Uh, that's a strong bid. It would be a very expensive bid. You know, maybe I want to pay a dollar. Too low, saying it's not good. Let's say if we two dollars. That says I'm being cheap. That's fine. And then click through to next. So it tells me here's my synopsis. There's my pin. I could view it. Nice close-up view there. It's just, you know, the Pinterest ad promoted pin and ad platform are getting better every single month, making lots of improvements. It shows me my budget my date range for the campaign, how many interests I have. Remember, I chose them up here. And then other narrowing down of the audience I had. The more narrow you make your audience, the cheaper the campaign gets. Probably the low, lower the clicks too, but we only want to pay for the clicks that really convert. Now we'll pick unspecified. Now let's pick everybody. And then I have to fill in my business information. Even though that's already there, I have to re-verify that. So that is an overview of the Pinterest ads platform. Promoted pins is what it's called. You also have buyable pins, rich pins, um, other metadata uh, available to you. And there's different ways to enhance your presence on Pinterest. But promoted pins is the main ad platform. So there you have it. That's how you use the Pinterest Ads Manager. It's a basic overview. I write a lot about promoted pins and buyable pins, cinematic pins, recipe pins, rich pins, and all the ad offering and Pinterest, Pinterest for Business options that Pinterest has to offer. It's a great way to drive tra traffic to your website. So follow me on my website, pintalk.net. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. You can always leave a comment or question. I'm on Twitter and, of course, Pinterest as well. And follow me on Snapchat or Instagram on my other account, metroni.com. Carry on, pinners.